stating that saturated fat increases cholesterol levels, which leads to heart disease. Right? And in 1953, Hansel Keyes uh, publishes this paper, Prediction and Possible Prevention of Coronary Disease, in which he says, however, the situation has been greatly confused by too much reliance on experiments with animal species differing from the new cholesterol metabolism. That's important. That's interesting. And so he seems to be admitting that, hey, cholesterol is not a problem because it looks like the animal studies that we're using aren't good. And so sure enough, you start doing a little bit of searching and you find that cholesterol was vilified because the original animal models that were used were things like rabbits and cattle and chickens. Did anybody see a problem with using a rabbit as a animal model for cholesterol? Diet. How much cholesterol did they really get in their diet? They eat grass. There's no, there's no cholesterol in there. <coughs> right? So you take an animal that never eats cholesterol, you inject it with a ton of cholesterol, you see that its arteries immediately clog and it dies. What did you just learn? You just learned that cholesterol is toxic to rabbits. Does it mean it's toxic to humans? No, it does not. Right? It's a different animal. You cannot make that assumption. Absolutely cannot. You have to run the experiment in the human being. So here's this interesting study about uh, fat in the diet with and without cholesterol. So someone is like, okay, well maybe we should retest this. Maybe I should check the hypothesis to see how, how good it was in the first place. So some guy had the right idea of retesting it, but injecting fat with and without cholesterol in these rabbits to see what the heck would happen. So here is the rabbits that are typical rabbit chow. Here's the rabbits that have the cholesterol plus the fat. Here's the rabbit on coconut oil, and here's the rabbit on a oil, right? So number one, regular low fat chow, cholesterol, high fat diet with 30% of the coconut oil, which is mostly saturated, high fat diet with 30% calories from sunflower, which is mostly unsaturated, polyunsaturated actually. And then they look at the LDL levels after six months. And as you can see, in groups one, three, and four, they're the same. But in group two, LDL is not through the roof. Why? Because the rabbit can't deal with cholesterol. Interestingly enough, even though it eats grass all the time. So we're going to talk a lot about the metabolic syndrome. What the heck is the metabolic syndrome? So in 1988, it was thought to be insulin resistance. And this insulin resistance would ruin your glucose tolerance. It would give you hyperinsulinemia. It would increase your triglycerides. It would lower your HDL cholesterol and hypertension. And all of these factors increase your risk of coronary heart disease. The, uh, as I said, we don't always have all the answers. Now in uh, the picture is much more complex, right? Here's all of the layers of data that have been added to this, and it's huge. So we're going to try to figure out what leads to that, but I'm going to keep that for the end of it because what I want to cover first is you know, why do we want to eat the specific way that uh, we're going to describe, and what are the implementations for that. If we have any extra time at the end, I'm going to get into some fructose metabolism and some, some uh, lipid metabolism as well.